and welcome to another video. This one's going to be a little bit different to uh, all my other videos before. The previous videos have all been in a series, this one's going to be one on its own. And the idea is to do a one hour build. That's a not a one day build, a one hour build. One of my favourite uh, presenters, content creators, whatever you want to call him. Uh, Adam Savage does a, uh, a whole bunch of these one day builds where he, he has an idea, he wants to make something and he sets himself aside today to do it. Very often they extend into um, more than a day just because that's the way that projects go sometimes. Um, but my intention this time is to do the whole thing in one hour. So what am I gonna build? Well, I'm gonna build one of these. Uh, this is, this is a mouse droid. Um, he's from Star Wars. He's a very minor character in the original Star Wars trilogy movies. Uh, his famous 12 second scene is when uh, Chewbacca is being led in handcuffs and he um, roars and scares one of these mouse droids away and the mouse droid uh, drives away screaming up the corridor. So this is um, the true style of Blue Peter, one I prepared earlier. Um, this, is my, this is my proper one, shall I call him. He's got full details on the side and uh, on the top. He's got a nice powerful radio control chassis underneath him and um, this one took me more than an hour but what I'm going to do is basically replicate it so make another one um, but using this. This is a very cheap, uh, it only cost me $20, radio control car, uh, just a children's toy really and um, it hasn't got a battery and the only other things that I've bought for this project specifically are uh, these two things, a little speaker and this little thing, a mp3 player which I've loaded some sound effects onto already and that's really all I've got to start with. Um, left over from my other project I've got these which are the templates to make the shell uh, which will be made from EVA foam and I've also got a clock to keep me honest. So you can see it's just coming up to quarter to eight in the evening and hopefully I should be finished by quarter to nine, but I guess we'll see. So maybe I should just crack on, eh? First things first, let's dismantle the car. See what's underneath. Pretty easy to do. Just some cross-headed screws. I think that's all the screws. Yeah. Okay, there's a wire holding the top to the bottom together. Um, there's a plug, so that's all right. I can get that out. Pull the aerial through. Here we go. Okay, we've got a chassis. We've got the body. The body's actually got some lights in it which at some point I could plug back in again and repurpose, but for now we don't need this bit. Right, first thing that I need to do is get the car working because it didn't come with a battery. I did notice, however, that the battery connector that it came with is a standard NICAD, and I know it uses a 7.2 volt, and I just happen to have this old rubbishy 7.2 NICAD. Um, I need to make the hole bigger to bring the, because I can't put this in the thing underneath, it's too big. So it needs to go on the top. So I need to just make the hole a bit bigger to bring the plug through because I don't really want to um, there we go. I don't really want to have the battery have it all finished and then um, nothing works. So I better make sure that it works. On on. We have life. Excellent. Next I need to attach that battery. So there's actually already a couple of holes in the bottom of the battery tray that should let me put a cable tie through. So let's get a cable tie through there. Great, 
that fits. Then let's find out where I can put all of these um, speakers. Well, that seems to fit quite nicely in there. And then, how does that fit on? That'll have to go on like that. And I need to be able to get to the buttons. I think we'll have it like that. We'll have the speakers facing backwards. It doesn't really matter which way the speakers face. It's probably going to be just as loud whichever way they face, but it'll be better than them facing downwards, which is the other option I've got there. So. Yeah, let's have them like that, even though. Trim those off. Okay, so that's only five minutes in and I've got the uh, chassis sorted. Move that to one side. Time to make the body shell. Some EVO foam that I prepared earlier. Don't need the edge strips. We'll make one of the um, one of the base pieces first. One of the flat base pieces. Uh, the pen. What I might do here is just do the corners because it's just a square. And there are two of them. And I'll just use then I'll just use this um, this straight edge rather than trying to fiddle around drawing the um, rather than trying to fiddle around, drawing around it and not ending up with a straight line. And I'm just going to cut straight into it. when you're cutting foam to have a very sharp knife and the edge of it does dull quite quickly. Oh yeah. Now I had hoped that I'd be able to make the top shell potentially from one piece of foam. And does the back fit in as well. No. Ah. Alright. So it doesn't quite fit. But because they're 45 degree inward cuts, I always like to use the um, set square here to remind me just how steep a 45 degree angle cut actually is because it's a lot steeper than you think it might be. That part, that's the last of the foam pieces. So let's get gluing. All right, I'm using this contact adhesive, which uh, you need to use in a well ventilated area. So I've got the garage door open, I've got my ventilation fan going and the window open, and I'm also gonna put on my respirator.
Right, I've got the, I've got the, I've got the bottom shell, top shell. Now it's time to join them to the, um, the main chassis. It's okay. Probably needs to sit quite a bit lower, but I've got a feeling that it's sitting on top of the speaker inside. So I might need to cut out a bit if I want that to sit any lower than that. I just need to cut the front of the front wheel arches a bit more open as well. The next step is going to be cutting out. A hole here for the speakers to stick through which uh, a hole for the speakers to stick through will actually be quite a good thing anyway because the sound will then travel up into the shell and echo around a bit in there just cut this trial hole to start with and see if it's in the right place this does not need to be pretty it just needs to be functional yeah, it's in the right place. I think that might need to be something that I'm, if I'm going to tweak it, that might need to be something I'll tweak later. Because it definitely sits okay. Like that's about the same ride height as the original Mouse Droids. It's just because I've got this extra low racing car chassis. It kind of looks a bit weird because you can see right through the bottom of it. But then... To be perfectly honest, because the mouse droid's nearly always on the floor, you're never going to see that bit. You're only ever going to see the top part. And the top part is pretty much done. So all I need to do is attach this bottom part to the car, which I'll probably do using um, some form of elastic bands or elastic hair ties, you know, like bungee cords, something like that. Um, the top... The edges of it need sanding, it needs painting, um, and the two halves need joining together. But other than that, it's basically finished. So, well, I didn't quite make an hour, but um, it's just gone nine o'clock. So it's taken me an hour and a quarter. Um, do we, should we see if its sound effects work? I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> He's got a bit of paint splattered on the front of him here because um, while I was working I had a... Do you mind? Finished? While I was working on him, uh, I had a spray can set to the side, and as I moved it, I accidentally pressed the top of it down and it sprayed him with some... Yeah, I, I know you're not happy about it. I accidentally sprayed him with a bit of silver paint. Sorry, buddy. Well, he's certainly loud enough, right? <laughs> that's one thing down. So that's it. Droids don't have to be hard, right? Um, I've got BB-8 here, he took me a year to build, um, very complicated, lots of motors. This um, mouse droid here, fully detailed, um, he probably cost about, I don't know, 150 bucks with all of the stuff that went into him and took a month or two for me to finish. But then this one here, chassis, um, 20 bucks, the MP3 player and the speaker I got as a bundle for five dollars because nobody uses these things anymore. Um, and the foam I've used 
two pieces of uh, out of a four pack of a ten dollar pack of EDA foam. So I could probably make another one of these out of the remaining two packs if I just got another chassis and an hour and a quarter of my time. Templates and sound files were from the Mouse Droid Builders Club, which is a thing, um, and it's very um, very useful resource. In fact, there's a builders club for every kind of droid out there, and the Mouse Droid Builders Club is really cool because they basically um, they don't try and build really screen accurate stuff. So a lot of the other builders, like the R2 and the BB-8s, amazing resource, but they're very focused on uh, making screen accurate Canon droids. Where, uh, because they're characters, whereas the mouse droid isn't really a character, they used quite a few different ones in the movie anyway, and in the later movies. So there's no such thing really as a screen accurate one. And so people just make their own ones. They make monster truck versions, they make rainbow colored ones, ones that have got see-through shells, ones that lift up with a porg inside. Uh, there's some really cool, uh, really cool builders out there, a lot of inspiration. So this droid is not, he's not gonna be black. Um, but maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll do an update to this video to show you um, what he looks like when he's fully painted. But I hope you enjoyed the build. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it maybe inspires you to go out and build your own droids um, because they're not hard, they're not um, expensive, and they're not complicated. So just get out there and do it. Thanks a lot for watching.